Hey there, it's Leanna Weller-Smith from Weller-Smith Design and Design Expert for Hot Chocolate. In this video, we will take a look at five different type of collections that I put together to inspire you when working on your next project. Before we start, let's touch on a little bit of terminology that I will use while describing the different typefaces that we will be working with. Here are a few common terms that will help you to follow along with me as well as help you to identify type styles faster in the future. Just as a side note, all of the typefaces that we will be talking about are all available in Canva. Serif typefaces have what is commonly referred to as feet. You will see them circled here. There's a little bit of a base that comes out of the bottom of each letter. Serif typefaces also usually have a nice thick thin flow to them which makes them beautiful. You can use them for titles, subtitles, body text, um, you name it. It's, it has a lot of different varieties. And a few samples are Abril Fatface, Bodoni, and Libra Baskerville. Slab serif typefaces are very similar to serif typefaces, but they have blocky feet. You can see that they're a lot thicker and um, chunkier and heavier in weight, making them more of a slab instead of how they flowed nicely on the regular serif typeface. Slab serif is usually best used for subtitles or callouts. It isn't generally used for reading text. A few examples are Aleo, Alpha Slab 1, and Nixie 1. Sans serif typefaces do not have feet and are usually very simple in nature. They tend to have a single line width to them and they aren't as um, flowy as your serif counterpart. A couple examples of sans serif, Aileron Thin, Open Sans, and Helveticish, which is a play on Helvetica, and that's used in Canva. Script typefaces can add a lot of personality to your designs. There's usually handwritten or traditional. You'll see handwritten script typefaces here uh, have more of a organic line width to them. They might have some extra little brush strokes and things like that. Your traditional script is more flowy like wedding script or um, classic type of thing. Save your script for headlines or callouts or special titles that you want um, to call some extra attention to. So a sample handwritten script is playlist script and a sample traditional is Parisienne. Display typefaces are usually bolder and very stylized. They have a very distinctive or expressive look feel to them. Like this version here, it evokes money. So when using these display typefaces, you don't want to overdo them, but they definitely add some variety and some punch to your layout. Use them sparingly. Don't use them for body copy. Definitely headlines, and they're usually a bit larger. So examples are Diploma SC, Graduate, and Limelight. Now that we've reviewed some common typography terms, let's move on to the design process. Pinterest is one of my favorite websites for inspiration. Go to Pinterest.com. I typed in typography. You can see there's lots of other things you can search for, but what comes up is a great variety of design and typography inspiration. I like to try to think outside the box with some of my projects, so this gives a new look on things that um, I might have not tried. So you, what you can do is find something that resonates with what you're working on, uh, like this is pretty cute, and then you can look for a sans serif typeface that might match this. So it just gives you a place to start for you when you're searching for different typefaces to use. You can see how the scale of them, how they use them with other typefaces, etc. Another favorite site of mine for inspiration is Desinspiration. Just go to desinspiration.net and again you would just search for what you're looking for. I typed in typography and there's a lot of really fabulous designers on Desinspiration, so you'll get high quality um, designs that you can use as inspiration for your next project. It's really cool to see how 
they use different typefaces, different angles, different type sizes. So definitely take a look through here. You can click on something and you can say, oh, I like this, this typeface. And then you try to match it with typefaces that you have available in the program that you're using. Once you've done your research and you have your vision, it's time to pick typefaces. So where do you start? Once you have your vision, it's time to pick typefaces. In general, I like to start with a core group of typefaces. Now, it depends on what you're working on. You may only need one typeface or maybe two. I generally start with three. I like to go with a serif, a sans serif, and a script typeface. Usually, my body copy can also be the same as either my serif or sans serif, um, but sometimes it is completely different. But those are the the core styles that I like to think of when I'm going into my design. Now in Canva, Canva has tons of typefaces that it offers. Uh, there, And I think most of them are, are really, really good. So you can't really go wrong unless you start mixing matching a little bit too much. But Canva also, if you're a Canva for Work member, you can also upload your own um, either brand fonts or fonts that you've purchased, um, which is really cool because then you can actually uh, customize things a little bit further. So these are the the core styles I like to start with. The one thing that is challenging sometimes can be getting the right balance across your, your, um, your content and your project that you're working on. I like to have uh, my title be a little bit, um, have a little bit more weight to it, uh, with like the subtitle or callouts. It still has some weight, but it's a little bit smaller, and then the body copy is comfortable to read. Now the script face can just um, be a filler, it can add some personality, um, but it's definitely something to use for different callouts and things like that. So you can see here that it's very easy to start with the typefaces, but then maybe not have the right sizes. So play around with the type. Again, look back at the samples that you, um, that you found for inspiration. It'll help guide what a good um, scale is between um, your different levels of information. So with Canva, as you can see, there's a ton of different typefaces. This grouping is probably a little bit over the top. It could be fun for like a manifesto or for um, a page that you want to kind of have a wild and funky feel to it. However, you definitely would not want to set uh, larger documents in a mix like this. You would definitely want to um, refine it a little bit more. So where do you go for type inspiration? I have a couple of favorite sites, so let's take a look at them. The first one is called fontpair.co and this one is fantastic because you can pick your sans serif serif, you can pick cursive, um, which could be like your script typeface, but it, these are all Google fonts. So it's great because it'll show you different combinations and it gives you an idea of how they could look together. You can also click on them and download the, the typefaces and you can load them onto your computer and you can click through the different options. The other great type resource that I found is actually from Canva and this one's amazing because it you can pick a starter font and what it then shows you are samples of uh, designs that have actually used those typefaces. So it's pretty cool. You can also click in here and you can change it to your type and you can see like what your titles would look like. You can see what the typefaces are. Um, but it's really cool and a lot of fun to play around with because you can see this one has some extra samples. You can see different samples of um, where these typefaces have been used on the web. You can find this at canva.com forward slash font hyphen combinations. It's such a great resource. In addition to the content in this video, I also have two style guides that you can download and print. The first one is the common typography terms that we covered at the beginning of this video. It has all of the different typefaces and styles that we talked about along with the examples. The second guide is 
five creative font pairings in Canva. So all of these font pairings I created in Canva for a place for you to start. So one is the classic, one is modern, clean and sassy, retro, and vintage. So each one comes with a script typeface, a title face, a subtitle, and body text. I also included the names of each of them so that this could get you started. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about typography and the differences between the different styles and how to start finding inspiration, picking typefaces, and playing around with them to get the effect that you desire. If you like this video, be sure to comment below. And if there's something that you would like to see in the future, definitely give us a shout out. So from the team here at Hot Chocolate, we hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you soon.